Paul Walton. Um, I am a junior high school teacher here in Davis County School District. I teach here at Kaysville Junior High. And one of, the, one of my favorite things to do every year is to have my brother Mark come one day a year as a guest speaker. The kids really love it. He's kind of a, you know, he's had his little five minutes of fame in Hollywood being the voice of Rhino the Hamster in the movie Bolt. He's the most wonderful person ever, and she loves both, and he's awesome, and you're a monster. How dare you disrupt their relationship with your evil dog? Um, I, I had him coming to my school before he had that part, and the kids still really enjoyed having him come because he's such an incredible artist, and he's very entertaining, he can do voices, and you know, that sort of thing, but, but then it's funny how things changed when he got the part of the movie Bolt, or the, you know, the, the, the part in Bolt. Uh, the, that year that he came, I remember, it was like a whole another animal. It's like kids were crazy. They were like, they wanted their picture taken with them. They were like seeing and they're like, oh my gosh, it's him, and they're screaming, and it was really funny. You know, and now Bolt's been out for a while, so now it's not as crazy anymore. But I mean, you can still see today, there's still kids that are pretty excited to see him. Kids are on his autograph and stuff like that. <laughs> When I was going to school, I was, I was pretty quiet. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't make friends very easily. But I, I had my art to kind of disappear into. And I had a great teacher. I don't know if he's still around, Robert McCleave at, at Bryant Junior High. He was awesome. And I just, his class was an escape from the world and all the other mean kids in school and the classes that I didn't like or understand. And, uh, it would just give us these wonderful projects and teach us how to, you know, draw on pen and ink or how to paint with gouache or acrylic. And he would lend me these great art books that he had, you know, these, these different uh, illustrators and comic book artists. And, uh, it, uh, yeah, you know, it was, it, I just saw it as this kind of uh, wonderful escape and kind of therapy for my life. Uh, the idea that maybe I could make a living at it someday was, I mean, I, I hoped there was some way I could do it, but it, it seemed pretty far off and unrealistic at that point. Ah, no, 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 look, singing is more than mere technique. It's about giving voice to your very soul. Where is your soul hiding, Carla? Like right when I was getting ready to graduate from college was when Disney was just eager to hire people like crazy and other studios like DreamWorks were were popping up. Uh, I was actually really shocked with, you know, that I, w I was able to do it. Uh, if anything, you know, once I actually got to the studio and started working hard at being a story artist and trying to learn from all these really talented people that were all around me, people that I, I knew about, people who had years and decades of experience, that's when I started going, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Where, what have I gotten myself into? This? I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. I'm not... I, I don't know if I can hack it. I don't know if I can keep up with this. And, and amazingly, I, I managed, I guess, to keep up well enough, you know, over the years. But I, I think even with a job that you love and that you have some talent with, you know, if, it, if it's at all, if it's, if it's challenging enough to be interesting to you, it's, it's going to be hard sometimes. It is strange, you know, that compared to the career I had where I worked very hard as an artist, I got way more attention, may, way more quickly just in my couple of years doing voices, you know, than I ever did, but that's, that's the way it works.